Let us now try to understand eighths. So we are still working on fractions and what we have here, think we have an apple pie and it's divided into eight equal parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight equal parts. Now, if you take away one of these, then what portion of the apple pie do you take? It is one out of how many? It is one out of eight, right? So you take away one eighth. You take away one eighth of the apple pie, right? So that is how you represent fractions and one will be one eighth. Let's say your friend comes in and you give him two parts, right? Let us say you give him these two parts. Then what portion of the pie did your friend get? Your friend received two eighths, two out of eight, right? So that is how we'll write two in the numerator and the number eight in the denominator. So eight represents total number of parts in which this apple pie was divided. And two is the number which is the slices which you gave to your friend. Now let us say your parents come and they want to share with you. Now in that case, you say, well, this one I took away, two my friends take away, and then I can give you two each. So if you give to your parents, to each, let us say this one, you give to your mother. So this one goes to your mother. So these two pieces goes to your mother. So what portion did you give away to your mother? The portion which you give is two out of eight, right? It is two out of eight. Now, if you look at it, let's think this was only one pie, right? So let us look into it and let's draw the complete picture. So what really happened was that you first ate one eighth of an apple pie. Then your friend came in and your friend had two slices. So your friend got two eighths of the same apple pie, right? And then your mother came in and she had two of these. So two eighths was taken away by your mother. So what portion remained? So you are left with three eighths. Do you see that? So these are the three portions left. So you are left with three eighths. Well, how much can you give to your father? You can give one eighth, two eighths, or three eighth, but not more than that, right? Let us say you give all the three portions to your father, okay? So let us say you give these three left portions to your father. Then your father receives three eighth of the apple pie. Now, if you add these numbers, what do you expect to get? Now, let us count how many did we all have? You had one out of eight, your friend had two out of eight, your mother had two out of eight, and your father had three out of eight of the same apple pie. Did you consume the whole pie? Let us check. We can figure out by adding these numbers, right? Let's add them up. So one eighth plus two eighth plus two eighth plus three eighth should be how much? It should be equal to 8 out of 8, right? Is it? Let's check. Let's add them up. So if you add them, you get 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 2, 5, and 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 out of 8 means equals to 1 whole. Remember that. So if we have same numbers in numerator and denominator, then it is as good as 1 whole. Do you understand? Normally, we'll have in the numerator a number lesser than the denominator. Then we call this as a proper fraction. But once we have it same, 
it becomes like this, which is one whole. Now, one is improper fraction. So, what we learn here is, if the numerator number is less than the denominator, like in all these cases, then we call them as proper fraction. Since, you know, we started with part of a whole is a fraction. When we say part of a whole is a fraction, that means it should be less than 1, right? But at times, you may come into situations where when you add them like this, it may become 1. In that case, 1 is improper fraction. We, we do not say this is not a fraction. We say this is improper fraction. Improper fraction. Now, let me explain why we call 1 as improper fraction. We call it improper fraction since it can be written as 1 out of 1. Do you see? 1 out of 1. That means the whole thing. So, there is a number 1 in the numerator and number 1 in the denominator. And so, you can think about any number. If you write number, let us say, 5, then can you call 5 as an improper fraction? Yes, it is, since we can write 5 as 5 over 1. Do you understand that part? It's kind of very important to appreciate that you can write any number as a fraction, but they will be called improper fractions. Proper fractions are those fractions where numerator is less than denominator. So let's write down here. So numerator is less than, that is the sign for less than, is less than denominator. So if numerator is less than denominator, then what do we have? We have proper fractions. Otherwise, it is improper fractions, right? So let's remember that part. So fractions could be proper fractions or improper fractions. And we'll also learn it could be combination of these two, which we'll call as mixed numbers, right? So we'll get in there later. But now for the time being, let us understand two things from here. One, if you all, if you share all the slices with different persons and then add them up, you should get a whole. Do you see that? So that is what we learn. You took away one, your friend had two, your mother had two, and your father had three. So in all, this apple pie was divided into eight equal parts. And everybody enjoyed it. And if you add their number of slices together, what do you get? Eight out of eight, which is one whole. So the whole thing finished. That is what it is, right? So with this, let's move on to learning more about fractions. Thank you.